You've seen my air-powered engine already. I don't know how well it will really work as a locomotive, but I think it's worth taking a few more steps in that direction to find out. I can't even test it properly though until I can run it on the field railway tracks, so I need to make a chassis for it that can carry a big bottle of compressed air. And me. I did stand it on one of my workshop trolleys, but they don't suit my outside railway because the treads and the flanges are too small. So I'm going to need to make some new wheels too. But they can be as big as I want. So I'm going much bigger. For, <laughs> for no particular reason than I prefer the look of them. And surely they make it go faster too. I considered different spoke designs. They'll be cut out of sheet metal, so everything's just two-dimensional. I wish I had an iron foundry, but don't we all? But still, you can do quite a lot with basic cutout shapes. I decided to go with this one, partly because I could nest them together a little and waste less steel as I cut them out. Then we spend a long time doing this job to cut the rims off a length of pipe. It's noisy and smelly and there are lots of sparks because it's thick pipe, but it's satisfying in a I'm really glad that's over sort of way. With the spokes welded into place, a wheel is made. Plenty of uh, adjustment there anyway. <laughs> but to keep these wheels on the rails, they'll need flanges too. These are made from C-shaped pieces, knocked into a shallow cone shape and fitted around the rim. To reduce wastage, I cut each one in three parts that needed reconnecting first. These are thicker than my usual flanges because if all goes well, they may be used quite a bit. As you can see, Will is wearing his helmet. <laughs> Due to popular demand. <laughs> and finally, there's a set of wheels. I like them. Now they need fitting to the axles. They have a square hole in the middle to take a square shaft. I'm thinking this will make it easier to connect the transmission elements later. But I haven't worked all that out yet, so I hope I'm right. Usually I put the bearings on the outside of the wheels, which gives most support to a platform on top. But this time I'm putting them inside, which means I can have weight lower down in between the wheels. Because centre of gravity could be a problem for this loco. Everything about it is tall and awkward, and that could be an issue when it goes round corners. Hmm. By the way, I haven't given up on a steam engine, it's just that a compressed air engine is also an interesting thing to make. I think if I come around to a steam engine as well, I'd go with double acting pistons acting directly onto the wheels and leave the flywheel out altogether. But that's a whole different project.
back to this one. The gap between the axles, that is the wheelbase, is just over two foot. So it should go round the curves in the railway. The next job will be adding the engine and the flywheel. Then there's the transmission, the air tank, the seat and the brakes. Hmm. So there's quite a lot more to do and it might not work at the end. But then again, it might. Right, we're going to test it. Let's see if we can go around the deepest corner. It's alright. Yeah. 